how far will these forces go to make a profit? Would they actually suppress cures for diseases the way they've suppressed free energy technology? Sadly, my research has shown me the answer is yes. One well-documented example is the case of Dr. Royal Reif. In the 1920s, Dr. Reif invented the most advanced microscopes of his time. He also developed a new technique he called coordinative resonance, which was apparently able to destroy cancerous tumors as well as viruses. In 1934, in clinical trials affiliated with the University of Southern California, Reif's treatment was tested on 16 terminally ill cancer patients. Within three months, they were all successfully cured. Soon after, a lab testing Reif's technology was burned down and a frivolous lawsuit was filed. Through the efforts of Morris Fishbein, head of the Journal of the American Medical Association, Reif was essentially shut down and ruined, his brilliant and promising work all but forgotten. It was really hard for me to consider that someone might actually be suppressing cures. And cancer has run through my family like a raging river. I found out that it's all about patents. If a pharmaceutical company can patent and make money from treatment, especially one that we have to keep on using, then that's what we get. Otherwise, we don't even hear about it. It's not just Rife who got shut down. Reen Case had an old Indian Ojibwe formula that was effective. Harry Hoxie and Max Gerson had natural remedies that worked. But you know, if you go and you look them up, the AMA makes them sound like complete quacks. And that's where following the money has been so helpful because the same powers who control the AMA and their research and funding control the pharmaceuticals. So there's a multi-trillion dollar financial incentive to suppress cures that can't be patented. Knowing that cures exist has not taken away the anguish I feel from losing so many people I love to cancer. It's given me something really satisfying to do with the pain. And I believe when we take the love and devotion that we have for everyone who's died and who will die unnecessarily and directed to developing and getting these cures out to people who need them, we can break this cancer legacy and heal. As difficult as it was for me, I have come to an inescapable and profoundly disturbing conclusion. I believe that an elite group of people and the corporations they run have gained control over not just our energy, food supply, education, and health care, but over virtually every aspect of our lives. And they do it by controlling the world of finance, not by creating more value, but by actually controlling the source of money. When I followed the money, I found that it took me up the levels of a pyramid. Here we are at the bottom level going about our daily lives. Above us is government, people who are given a monopoly on force and use it to tax and control us whether or not we agree. But who controls them? At the next level are the corporations. Many would say that it is now corporations and not nation states that rule the world. They call it a corporatocracy. To acquire the world's resources and control the markets, this corporatocracy must have access to cheap money. The big corporations get their loans at special rates from the big banks, which means that those who control the major banks, the moneyed elite, ultimately control the corporations. As I've followed the money, I've learned that almost everything I once believed about money is simply not true. 